in Warsaw, a city once under Soviet rule. President Biden's speech was laced with historical resonance. He repeatedly compared Ukraine's war against invading Russian forces to the 20th century struggle against communism. It was a long, painful slog, fought over not days and months, but years and decades. But we emerged anew in the great battle for freedom, a battle between democracy and autocracy, between liberty and repression, between a rules-based order and one governed by brute force. In this battle, we need to be clear-eyed. This battle will not be won in days or months either. We need to steel ourselves for the long fight ahead. The president gave Russia a clear message. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. We have sacred obligation. We have a sacred obligation under Article 5 to defend each and every inch of NATO territory. President Biden praised the valor of the Ukrainian people. Now, in the perennial struggle for democracy and freedom, Ukraine and its people are on the front lines, fighting to save their nation. And their brave resistance is part of a larger fight for an essential democratic principles that unite all free people. He said Ukraine would win that fight. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. The White House later said that remark did not mean the president was calling for regime change in Russia. But the Kremlin offered a swift response, saying the Russian people should choose their leader, not Joe Biden. Following the speech, some protesters in the crowd called for NATO to give Ukraine fighter jets and impose a no-fly zone, something the alliance has refused to do. All these promises, $14 billion, it's not going to the air defense systems. Our army desperately needs for real weapon. We are not asking for American troops. Our husbands, our friends, our friends, women friends, are now in Ukraine fighting for every inch of Ukrainian territory. Earlier, President Biden met Ukrainian refugees in Warsaw, among the estimated 3.8 million who have fled Russia's invasion. The president's trip comes at a defining moment for Europe. His message of unwavering unity with NATO allies has been warmly welcomed. But just over the border, Ukrainians continue to face the Russian onslaught as its cities are pummeled by missiles and mortars. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, Warsaw.